Hello again. I'm glad you're still with me. This week we have three goals. The vocabulary, of course, this lecture and its files and assignment, and studying the sports phrases that are frequently used in a business setting. Let's start with this lecture. Writing proposals to clients and to grant funders. Selling comes in many forms, from handing out samples at Walmart to inventing a new marketing campaign for a Ferrari. In a way, everyone who's working is selling him or herself every day. Persuading your colleagues and bosses that you are someone they can trust and value, going the extra mile for customers so that they feel good about being loyal to the company, or being 100% accurate in your data and analyses. Client and grant proposals, it's all about salesmanship. In this unit, we will focus on selling an idea, and we'll do it in writing. We will examine what it takes to make convincing and persuasive proposals, and the assignment at the end of the week is to write a grant proposal for a nonprofit agency. For example, you're working for a tech company that creates custom software for medical offices. A group of medical professionals, the Tri-City Group, wants a proposal from your company for a new patient information system. How do you go about putting together a winning proposal? The first step, and one that many unsuccessful writers skip, is to actually study the client's requirements. If they're looking for a patient information system that works securely on Microsoft tablets, it's no good if you write your proposal for Mac OS. Make sure you know in great detail exactly what the client wants. But that may not be enough. To write a successful proposal, you need to solve the real problem. And this may not be what the RFP, the Request for Proposal, states. The best way to start finding out is to talk with a potential customer directly. Once you understand their company culture and background, you'll be better able to state your proposal in a way that convinces them. Why has your potential customer asked for this proposal? Are they looking for cost savings? Perhaps they're searching to expand their business? You may need to do some library research if they won't tell you directly. If it is a publicly traded company, their financials will be discoverable. You might also talk with other companies that have worked with them before. All this is in order for you to develop a methodology for them to reach their goals, and hopefully part of that strategy will be to use your software. You also need to evaluate the possible options available for the client. Could they roll out the new software in stages? How much training will their staff need to use the software? How does it integrate with their existing data collection and storage? Finally, you want to make sure you outshine your competitors. It is unlikely that you are the only company bidding on this job. Therefore, you need to emphasize your strengths. Perhaps you are smaller than your competitors, but you can promise a faster turnaround. Or perhaps you have the best client testimonials from similar projects in the past. You want them to choose you. Why should they choose you? Naturally, your textbook cannot go into as much detail as I've given above. Nevertheless, the authors offer some succinct advice. The main piece of advice is to lead with the benefits you can provide. You're not really selling software. You're selling convenience or security or growth potential. Whatever your primary benefits are, make sure that they bookend your proposal, both in the title or shortly thereafter, and then repeat it at the end. The book mentions the following proposal sections. Promise a benefit in the title. Tell people where you're going. Use bullets and headings. Put your recommendations up front. And re-emphasize the benefits to the client. You're not writing a marketing campaign in this lesson, but if you were, you might consider looking for the kinds of words that get the most clicks and likes. Here's a short list. Suddenly, now, 
announcing, introducing, improvement, amazing, sensational, remarkable, revolutionary, startling, miracle, magic, offer, quick, easy, wanted, challenge, compare, bargain, and hurry. This list was published in 1963, more than 50 years ago, but they're still valid today. However, for internet-based campaigns, read the article itself at the link in this lesson. There are two aspects of grant writing that can make strong men cry. Selecting the right measurable outcomes for a social project and writing the budget. For the former, think about how you will know when people are feeling something. How do they behave? Do they do certain things more or less than previously? Those are measurable outcomes. A word of warning. Don't be too grand in what you hope to achieve. As they say in proposal writing, under promise and overperform. On this screen are seven components of a good and fundable grant proposal. Is there a need for the project? What are the measurable outcomes of the project? How will you conduct the project methods? Why are you the right organization to carry out this project? How will you know when you're successful? What's your budget? How will the project become self-sustaining? Most grant budgets are divided into the sections of supplies and equipment, labor and benefits, and overhead. There may be other sections, but let's keep it simple and look at those. Supplies and equipment may be print materials, printers, paper, medical supplies, etc. To figure out the cost of labor, name each person who will be working on the project and multiply their hourly salary with the number of hours they will contribute. The cost of benefits varies greatly from one organization to another, but a percentage such as 30 or 40 percent of salary will cover most cases. Your overhead is the general percentage of costs that your organization needs to bring in to keep the office running and cover electricity, rent, water, etc. Be aware that many grantors do not cover overhead so you need to line-item everything related to the project instead. There may be other expenses, such as marketing or advertising. Let's take a look at the budget on the following slide. As you look through this budget, you realize quickly that it is labor that drives the cost up rapidly. You may think that John Smith earns too much money at $100 an hour, but if we're talking about an attorney, the hourly charge is probably more like 300 or 400. Advertising is expensive, yes, but you might be able to get a deal by depending on lower cost sources such as community newspapers or your community college radio station. Benefits at 25% is really underestimated. In most cases, benefits run at least 40% in order to give staff a decent, decent health insurance policy and other benefits. An overhead at 30% of expenses? Huh. Well, that would be a dream for most organizations. The dollars add up fast. So, now that you're a bit shell-shocked at the kinds of costs even a small organization incurs, let's look at the bright side. There are lots of charitable organizations in this and every state that hand out money by the millions for good causes. Your assignment in this lesson is to write a grant pre-proposal. The actual proposal is much longer than one page and is frequently done online with very specific questions and categories. You're basically writing a letter of inquiry. This letter, which is a mini-proposal, is divided into the sections I explain in the assignment. If you can't get it down to a single page, but well, no worries. I will accept two or more pages as well. However, Try to be as succinct as you can. Grantors love brevity. Happy writing!